Hey dudes, what's up? Ooh, check out my sweet cup. It's actually Sam's. And it's Sam's birthday today. <laughs> Sam, when you get on here, I will wish you a birthday. What's up, Katie Jo? Okay, I've been practicing. I'm going to play music for a minute. I'm not quite ready to sing, but I might whistle. Okay? try it uh, I'll try whistling to it do you know the song you might know the song I do love this song Also, I found another toy. I wonder if any kids would recognize this because this is old. This is old. Okay, ready? Put the uke down. Okay, weird. Take this, put this on there. Have you seen this before? Amy, Melissa, Dana, maybe? Oh! This used to entertain me for hours. Maybe it's like an old school fidget spinner. Right? Check it out. Oh, oh, snap. I mean, they're pretty cool, right? What's up, Parker? Are you going to dance today, buddy? I love that, Parker. So cute. Check it out. I don't know what this is called. But it is classic old school. You are correct. Yeah. Oh, sometimes that happens though. It goes flying. Okay. Um. So. Dee -doo -dee. If anybody knows what it's called, you get to tell me. Um. I'm gonna read another Skippy John Jones book today. What's up, Hannah? How you doing, little buddy? Um. I'm gonna play you my tune one more time though. Okay, ready? Oh wait, I forgot. Oh wait, okay, one more time. What? Woo -hoo -hoo. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Okay, thanks for listening. Oh, and check it out. I got this cool thing. For when I'm really jamming out and I want to party, I do this. That goes out to Tony Wathin in the house. Because he, he a DJ. Okay. All right. Let's get to it. Let's get after it. Okay. Today, my buddy, Skippy John Jones. But I always have to have this little disclaimer. Okay. That this little Siamese cat, Ayo, is for pretend speaking Spani. Speaking Spanish for pretend, not real Spanish. He's a goofy little kid with a crazy imagination, but it's not real Spanish. It's for pretend Spanish because we know what real Spanish is like, and it's much more complicated. Some of you kids know how to speak it, like Elsa, right? There's a bunch of you. But this is a funny book. We're just being funny. Okay? Here we go. Oh. Okay, I think Parker was already dancing. Every morning, Skippy John Jones woke up with the birds. There he is in the bird bath with the bird, which is curious because Skippy John is a kitty. 
should be mortal enemies. And this did not please his mother at all. Get yourself down here right now, Mr. Kitten Britches, ordered Mama Junebug Jones. No self-respecting cat ever slept with a flock of birds, she scolded, or ate worms or flew or did his laundry in Mrs. Doogie Herd's bath. So there he is, chilling with birds. Meow, meow, meow. And there's Mama Junebug saying, no, kitty britches, not acceptable. She's from Texas, so that's how she talks. Asher and Zach are in the house. Okay. The lecture went on and on as usual. You've got to do some serious thinking before you leave this room, Mr. Fuzzy Pants, said his mother, about just what it means to be a cat, not a bird, not a mouse or a grouse, not a moose or a goose, not a rat or a bat. You need to think about just what it means to be a Siamese cat. And stay out of your closet, she added, closing the bedroom door. Mama Junebug is mad. Wah, wah, wah. See, there's his little sisters playing, doing stuff. And then he's like, Meh. Whatever, Mom, why you gotta yell at me all the time? I'm just a kid being a kid. You know? Okay. But once he was alone, Skippy John Jones began to bounce and bounce and bounce on his big boy head. Oh, I'm Skippy John Jones, and I bounce on my head, and one or six times I land on my head. On his way down to earth from a gigantic big bounce, Skippy John Jones shot past his bedroom mirror. Holy guacamole, exclaimed Skippy John Jones. Who was that? He really does have exceptionally large ears, but he's little, so he's good at bouncing. And then he, there he is looking in the mirror. Uh, dang, there it is, there it is. So he's looking in the mirror, how can I not? I tried practicing to get my stuff right, but it's still quite difficile. Oh, okay, there it is. Looking in the mirror. You know? So up he went again, and again it appeared. Then using his very best Spanish accent, he said, My ears are too big for my head. My head is too big for my body. I am not a Siamese cat. I am a Chihuahua! Back on land, Skippy John Jones climbed into his toy box and rifled through some old junk. After he put on his mask and sword and climbed into, onto his mouse, Skippy John Jones began to sing in a muy muy soft voice. My name is Skippito Fresquito. I fear not a single bandito. My manners are mellow. I'm sweet like the jello. I get the job done, yes, indeed. Oh. <laughs> okay, so he is, uh, that's what he sees in the mirror. He sees a chihuahua. That's the whole deal. This crazy meow meow thinks he's a rough rough. Okay, so he's digging around in his toy box. Okay, wait, no, this way. Digging, digging around in the toy box. There he is. I'm a superhero. He's got a cape and a mask. That's all that's required for being Skipito Frisquito. Back in the kitchen, Juju B, Jezebel, and Jilly Boo Jones were helping Mama Junebug Jones make lunch. Can Skippy John come out of his room now? asked Juju B. No, answered Mama Junebug Jones. Mr. Fluffernutter is still thinking. In fact, Skippy John wasn't thinking about being a Siamese cat at all. Look, they're making sandwiches. Looks like they're making uh, sardine sandwiches with miracle nip, not whip, because they like catnip. <laughs> and then Skippy John is running around his room like a crazy person. Three, 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 three. Okay. With a walk into his closet, his, his thoughts took him down a lonesome desert road far, far away in old Mexico. Not long into his journey, a mysterious band of chihuahuas appeared out of the dust, 
Ay, caramba, who goes there? asked Skippy John Jones. We go by the name of Los Chibijangos, growled Don Diego, the biggest of the small ones. Who are you? I am El Skipito, the great sword fighter, said Skippy John Jones. When the smallest of the small ones spoke up, Why the mosquito, dude? said Poquito Tito. I am incognito, said Skipito. Do you like rice and beans? asked Pintolito. See, si, I love mice and beans, said Skipito. He might be the dog of our dreams, whispered Rosalita. Perhaps, said Tia Mia, if he knows the secret password. There's always secret passwords. Okay, uh, so there's all the chihuahuas, various shapes and sizes. They are all quite hilarious. Look at that little, little, little one. And there is El Skipito. Okay. Leaning toward Don Diego, El Skipito half sneezed, half spoke the secret password into the Chihuahua's very large ear. Ah, Chupichu! Bless you, said Don Diego. Gracias, said Skipito. Then it is true, decreed Don Diego. Yippee, yippee, yippito. It's the end of Alfredo Bazito. Skipito is here. We have nothing to fear. Adios to the bad bumblebito. And then the chimichangas went crazy loco. Okay. So let's see. He, uh, what is the secret password, my friend? And he whispered it right into his ear. But he sneezed, sneezing, not acceptable at this time. And then all the dogs are like, yeah, he's the secret guy, yeah. So then they had a fiesta. Whoa. Okay. Then they took a siesta. Siesta, siesta. There it is. Okay, because you know, dogs and cats, they like to go cuckoo loco and then they're like whoosh, out, out for the count. But after waking up, the chimichangos got down to serious business. Using his paw, Don Diego drew a picture of, in the sand of the great Bumblebeetle for Skipito to see. A hush grew over the chimichangos, so great that one could hear a whisper drop. Alfredo Bazito, whispered the crowd. El Blimpo, Bumblebito Bandito. Si, said Poquito Tito. The Bandito steals our frijoles. Not your beans, cried Skipito, outraged. Si, Poquito continued. Red beans, black beans, Boston baked and blue. Coffee, cocoa, kidney beans, pinto and jelly too. And now he comes for us, Poquito added. Por qué? asked Skipito. Because we are full of the beans too. Then Don Diego stood tall and his most somber voice declared, Yo quiero frijoles. Huh? asked Skipito. The dude just wants his beans back, said Poquito Tito. And you are the dog for the job. Me? asked Skipito. Then all the chimichangos turned towards Skipito, the great sword fighter. Okay. So the, that's what Bumbleito Bambito Dito looks like. Rah! He's got a giant nose, giant belly, angry face, little tiny feet. And they're all like, he steals our beans, Rah! that guy's lame. And then he's like, I just want my frijoles back. Ah! And Skipito's like, I mean, you know, I don't understand, but I'll try. But poor Skipito had no time for a plan, because in the blink of an eye, a gigantic shadow darkened the landscape. The chimichangos scattered in all directions. Vamos, Skipito, or it is you the bandito will eat all, they cried. Skipito stood his ground, but his legs shimmied and shook like jello, and his teeth chattered like the castanets. Then in a muy muy soft voice, he said, my name is Capito Fresquito. I fear not a single bandito. But 
but Alfredo Bazito flew straight for Scapito until the bean-eating bandito hovered only inches away from the great sword fighter's face. Holy frijoles! cried Scapito as he thrust his sword into the air. Da -da -da! The shadow is being cast. Everybody scatters. Ah! And then... Da -da -da! Doink! He doinks him with his sword, but he's so very huge. Oh, Scapito, you are so very brave. Suddenly, pop! When the bandito went standing on Scapito's sword, and quicker than anyone could say chihuahuas, cheese, and crackers, every kind of bean came spilling out of Alfredo Bazito, the bambalito bandito. He's like a giant piñata. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. Beans flying everywhere. Jelly beans, baked beans, Boston beans. Every kind of beans. That's awesome. It's huge. Then all the doggies burst into song. Yippee, yippee, yippito. Our hero is El Skipito. He's the dog of our dreams who delivers the beans. And now we can make our burritos. That is happy. Happy times. Because there is these guys. Look at the little littles. They're all dancing around, clapping hands. Me, 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 me. And then, Don Diego, little man, and there's Frisquito. The savior of all the chihuahuas. Okay. Back at home, there was such a ruckus coming from Skippy John's room that Mama Junebug Jones and the girls had to find out what was going on. They raced down the hall to Kitty Boy's room. Panguito, crashito, papito. Just in time to see Skippy John's closet exploding. Ah! What? Everything's going flying. There's some kitty pops and beans and little fuzzy things and other things. Then out flew candy, beanbag doggies, and the kitty boy with his birthday piñata on his head. Scampy John Jones, everyone cried. Hola, mucha chicha. He said in a muy, muy soft voice. Mama Junebug Joe's lifted, lifted up Skippy John and covered his head with furry, purry kisses. What am I going to do with you, Mr. Coco Pugs? She scolded. I see what he did. He got into his birthday piñata. That guy, look at all that candy. That's amazing. So she's like, okay, Mr. Coco Pugs, you are just in trouble, but that's okay, because I still love you, you know. Coco Pugs. That night, when he was supposed to be going to sleep, Skippy John began to bounce and bounce on his big boy bed. Oh, I'm Skippy John Jones with a mind of my own and I'll bounce on my bed for hours. I know I'm a cat, but forget about that. Say goodnight, Skippy John Jones, called his mama. Buenas noches, mis amigos, said Skippy John Jones. He is hilarious. Yay! Yay, local blend. Beep, boop, beep. Well, that's pretty awesome. I would like to say, I really do like Skippy John Jones. I think that's pretty hilarious. My friend Lauren showed me that little app and it entertains me for hours, you know? Another sippy. Mmm. Good stuff. Okay, one more. And this one is not quite as hilarious as Skippy John. But this one is called Odd Velvet because she's odd. And I think I'm a little odd, so that's why I like it. So let's see what Odd El Velvet says. Okay. One day, on the first day of school, Velvet's classmates brought their teacher cinnamon tea, lace handkerchiefs, and a heart-shaped box of potpourri. Velvet handed her teacher an egg carton filled with seven rocks, her favorite red shoelaces, and half a sparrow's egg. Look at these kids. 
these guys are goofy. These ones, they're like, what? Wait, what? Ugh. So that guy, they've all got their little backpacks, lunch boxes. That one dude has braces. That's pretty cool. Teacher, interesting hair. That's what Velvet brought. Fun stuff. And she's like, oh, look, I collect weird things. That's cool. Okay. I wouldn't mind seeing half a sparrow's egg. At lunchtime, Velvet not only carried a used brown paper bag, but inside of it were things like carrots, a butter sandwich, and she ate them. At recess, a few of the girls noticed that Velvet was not wearing a new dress, even though it was the beginning of the school year. Where did she come from? They wondered out loud. Yeah, man, nothing wrong with some hand-me-downs, girls. You know? Whoopsie. So there's the, all the kids being like, what, aren't you supposed to get all the same clothes as we do? Because we're all supposed to be the same. Sheep. And Velvet's like, nope, I like being different, doing my own thing, marching to my own beat. Boop, boop, boop. Teacher's like, Interesting. Okay, kids. Okay. All of the strangest did not stop after the first day of school. In fact, it got worse. Velvet brought in a milkweed pod to, for show and tell. Luckily, three of the other girls brought in a talking doll, a wedding doll, and a crying doll and saved the day. Hmm. What would you guys want to see? There's the dolls. Wah! Wah! Hello, I'm a doll and wet your pants doll. But then over here, more interesting to me, milkweed. That's pretty cool, I think. Milkweed, okay. Milkweed has stuff, cool stuff inside. Velvet's nose was freckled. She had a pack of only eight crayons and her sweater once belonged to her older sister. Nothing was right about Odd Velvet. Although everyone was polite to her, no one was silly enough to pick Velvet for their partner or play, or partner play, or to walk home with her after school. No one wanted to be different the way that Velvet was different. Nah. Okay, there's all the kids doing kid stuff. There's the tiny little schoolhouse they can barely fit in because it's very, very, very tiny. They're on the swings, doing normal kid stuff, but she's got cool ginger braids and she's jumping rope. Hmm. I like freckles too. One day, on the day of the school field, school field trip, the children were laughing and calling each other by their nicknames. Someone called out, what's your nickname, Velvet? It got quiet as Velvet looked around. I don't have one, she said, but my father told me that the day I was born, the sun was just rising over the mountains and outside it looked as though the world had been covered with a blanket of smooth, soft lavender velvet. A few of the boys let out a giggle, <clears throat> but mostly the bus fell quiet for a moment. Everyone was thinking of how beautiful that morning must have been on the day velvet was born. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So they're like, ooh, velvet in the sky. That's amazing. Whoa. There's the dude with braces. Hey, what's up, dude? I'm going to have super straight teeth someday. Bah. The following week, a school drawing contest was announced. There was no question who the winner would be. Sarah Garvey had the best markers, the biggest paint set, and more colored pencils than anyone else in the class. When the day arrived to announce the winner, the children let Sarah sit right up front. No one was more surprised than she was when the teacher called out Velvet's name. What? There's the teacher with her loopy doops hair. And there's Sarah Garvey with all of her accoutrements. And there's little Velvet. Oh, I only have eight crayons and I'm still a master of art. Whoa, look at that. So amazing. Velvet had drawn an apple. It's just a piece of fruit, Sarah protested. Everyone stared at the picture. It looks so real. I'd like to eat it, someone said. It seems like you can pick it off, another kid added. Sure enough, 
With just her eight crayons, Velvet had drawn the most beautiful apple the children had ever seen. It's true. Look at them, they're like, over here, stinker face, jelly belly. She's jelly. But look at these dudes, whoa, that apple's amazing. Yeah, makes me wanna have apple for lunch. Cute. Little by little, the things that Velvet said and the things that Velvet did began to make sense. The teacher had Velvet speak for two whole days about her rock collection, and she even had ashes from a real volcano. What? Okay, so now she's like, check out my cool rock over here, dee dee dee, and look at my ashes from a real volcano. <laughs> Looks like there's a little bit some worms in there. Velvet actually turns out to be pretty cool, my friends. Still, on the day she handed out invitations to her birthday party, the whispering began. I bet her, her house is old and dark, Sarah said. The thought of going to Velvet's house made everyone feel a little uneasy. Velvet lived in a tiny house at the end of a long road. There was no jungle gym or tether ball, just a tall swing hanging from a big old tree. Huh. Let's check that out. So there's school, everybody's normal houses, but then there's Velvet's house and a cool swing. And she's swinging back and forth. Ding, ding, ding. And there's her house. I don't think it looks weird at all. I think it's going to be cool. At the door, Velvet's mom and dad politely asked the children in. There were no birthday magicians or wizards, not even a clown. But they, get, but they got to turn Velvet's room into a castle. The royal subjects painted their faces and put glitter in their hair. They jumped high off the bed into a blue blanket. There's braces with his balloon. Hey man, I'm partying. I love blue blankets. La la la. And look at these guys. I'm gonna paint cool things on your face cause then you'll be magic. Da, 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 da. Who doesn't like castles? I like castles. Velvet's sister made each of them golden crowns with colored jewels. They took turns wearing Velvet's royal cloak, which used to be a bed cover. They played cards and shot marbles. Velvet even showed them how to draw beautiful apples. Oh, Velvet, you're so kind and generous. There's the balloon, there's the kids. There's everybody. Looks like even little Sarah McGarvey there is having a good time. Not so jealous now, are you, Sarah? I like it. On the last day of school, Velvet's classmates bought, brought their teacher handfuls of flowers, cards they made, and an impressive collection of nice looking rocks. Velvet was different, but maybe she wasn't so odd after all. Hmm, I like it. We're learning lessons today. Braces, extra happy. And these guys are best friends now. Yay! Well, that's a little bit of a feel-good number, wouldn't you think? Um, okay, so maybe, oh, whoa, whoa, things falling. Let's see, um, I sent out a bunch more card sets yesterday so hopefully kids will get them soon send them to me ah, and uh, maybe I need to have one more gumball okay hope it's a good color come on red or white red or white ah orange mm, I hate orange I'll still eat it but let's try one more time red white or green orange again Come on! I doubly hate orange. But I'll chew it anyways. It's only going to last a second. Okay. I'll rock you out to my song one more time. If I remember it. Okay? Ready? If you know it. Oh! This gum is falling apart. I'm going to try to chew through it. Okay, wait.
I'm just kidding. I would never do that. Lexi bought me this for my Christmas one time. Um, okay. Bye to all you dudes. Oh, I gotta take a call. Hello, governor. Sure, I'll talk to you soon. Okay. So, I got some more cool books tomorrow. And, thank you. Peace out, kids. Later.